Congress. President Trump will head back to court in Manhattan for the start of the second week of his hush money trial. Jurors heard from three different witnesses last week with Michael Cohen's former banker Gary Farrow on the stand when court wrapped up for the week on Friday. Prosecutors still unwilling to reveal other witnesses ahead of time. Out of concern, the President Trump might attack them online or in the media. News Nation's Caitlin Becker is outside the courthouse once again with the latest. Caitlin, what can we expect to see today as the second week of testimony gets underway? Well, Marky, prosecutors are going to pick things up with their third witness, bank banker Gary Farrow, who took the stand last week. He's going to return today. Now, he testified Friday that in 2016, he was assigned to work with Trump fixer Michael Cohen, who had set up an LLC at First Republic Bank where he worked. Now, why is that important? This is really one of the building blocks of the prosecution's case. It's essentially their contention that prosecutors say Cohen used this specific LLC account to wire a $130,000 hush money payment to porn star Stormy Daniels. Now, this was for her silence over an alleged affair with Donald Trump. And the reason they claim that Michael Cohen did this was to ensure that the story wouldn't see the light of day and could potentially harm Trump's presidential campaign. Now, David Pecker, the former publisher of the National Enquirer, spent days on the witness stand last week bolstering that very assertion. He testified that he believed Donald Trump was not only aware of these payments, but that they were done under his directive. Now, when discussing potentially a damaging story about an alleged affair with Karen McDougal, Assistant District Attorney Joshua Steinglass asking Pecker, quote, was your principal purpose to suppress her story so as not to influence the election? Pecker responded, yes. Steinglass further asking, were you aware that expenditures by corporations made for the purpose of influencing an election are unlawful? He also responded, yes. So, Marky, the defense team here fighting back on cross-examination, though, poking holes in Pecker's story by highlighting some inconsistencies with previous statements that he had made. Trump's lawyers also downplaying that catch-and-kill scheme as part of kind of standard operating procedure, they said, in the tabloid industry. Now, Gary Farrow is still under direct examination, so we don't know exactly how long that will take with him today, and then cross the defense team will certainly get their crack at him after that. There were reports that we might see Michael Cohen on the stand as early as today, but you never know how long you're going to spend on you know, direct and cross-examination, so that's still kind of up in the air. In the meantime, former President Donald Trump spent the weekend in Mar-a-Lago celebrating Melania's birthday. He is expected back here in just a few hours. Court resumes at about 9.30 a.m. local time. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.